We haven't talked about Flat Earth for a while, so why don't we do that? Time to go for the lowest of the low-hanging fruit here on the internet because they're easy targets. What can I say? One simple and definitive proof that you are not living on a spinning ball orbiting around the sun is the fact that daytime and nighttime never switch places as they must for the heliocentric model to be true. Anyone else feels like the way Eric talks sounds like he's about to fall asleep? I need a coffee just to get through this video. Alright, let's see what you have here. According to the Globe Doctrine, Earth makes one complete rotation on its axis every 24 hours, while simultaneously orbiting around the Sun and completing one full revolution every 365 days. One way you know how this is likely true is because of the complexity of the model. If scientists and the government really wanted to trick people, they would make it as easy to understand as possible. Why would you make a fake model so complicated, especially if the reality, flat earth in your case, is true? No one is going to believe it if they don't understand it. So the only reason it's complicated is because that's just the truth of the matter. Let me give you an example. Instead of saying the earth revolves around the sun while also rotating on its axis, NASA could just make up that the earth just rotates and it doesn't revolve around the sun. There, simple as that. It would do a better job of hiding the flat earth model while also obeying the same principles. If this was truly happening, however, as you can see from the following image, the daytime and nighttime sides of the globe would have to flip every six months. For a more detailed illustration of this, imagine the sun rising at 6 a.m. in New York on the summer solstice. After three months of 24-hour rotations, the globe would be 90 degrees from its previous position and a quarter turn away from the sun, meaning that sunrise in New York during the autumnal equinox should now be happening at midnight. I've heard this argument thrown around a few times in the Flat Earth community. How come it is that when time passes over the course of a year that the time of night and day doesn't change depending on the position the Earth is in during its orbit around the Sun? Why, you see, my friends, there's a pretty good explanation for that, and this also kind of reinforces my point earlier. If scientists were truly making up a globe model to trick people, they would just say the Earth and the Sun are stationary and do not revolve around each other. It would solve problems like this one, and people would believe it because it's simple and easy to understand. Anyway, to get to the point of the Flat Earther's concerns, we have to know the difference between the sidereal and the solar day. We'll let him finish his point first. After three more months of 24-hour rotations, the globe would be on the complete opposite side of the sun, 180 degrees from its starting position, so that sunrise in New York during the winter solstice should be happening at 6 p.m., or in other words, daytime and nighttime would have completely flipped from six months earlier. In reality, as you can test and observe for yourself, this simply does not happen and remains yet another nail in the globe's coffin. You got that? Apparently after 6 months, day should be night and night should be day. Amazing calculations. Okay, now let me get to the actual science behind it all, and he actually addresses this point later, so don't worry, there's plenty of content in this one video. The key to the answer comes from the difference between the sidereal day and the solar day. The one that we're used to when talking is the solar day, which actually measures the length of time it takes for the sun to reach the same position in the sky. In other words, the solar day already adjusts for the Earth's orbit around the sun. Meanwhile, the sidereal day is the time it takes specifically for the Earth to make an objective rotation around its axis. This measure is independent of the Sun and looks at the Earth's objective start and objective end, which only considers the Earth making a 360 degree spin. Of course, when I use the word objective here, I don't mean fully objective since everything in the universe is technically only relative to each other, but you get the point. Anyway, the solar day, the day that we're used to, is 24 hours, while the sidereal day is 23 days and 56 minutes, which is 4 minutes shorter than the solar day. And that 4 minutes is what makes up for the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Looking at the model from above, because the Earth spins counterclockwise while also orbiting counterclockwise, the Earth has to spin just a little more to make up for its orbit. That's why the solar day is 4 minutes more than the sidereal day. Here's a short animation I found on YouTube by the channel named Dr. James O'Donoghue that clearly shows this using a visual demonstration. As you can see, the actual time it takes for the Earth to make a 360 degree revolution is 23 hours and 56 minutes, but we added that 4 minutes in order to compensate for the Earth's orbit. You're probably thinking, how does it magically become 24 hours, such a perfect number? Well, may I remind you that the measurement of time is created by humans. We base the length of hours and minutes on nature, so it's only natural that the sun would reach the same position in the sky in the perfect number of 24 hours. Anyway, the last point I wanted to point out is that 4 minutes a day perfectly explains the example that Eric mentioned. He claims that under this globe model, after 6 months, night and day should be flipped, and we should have a 12 hour difference than 6 months ago in terms of night and day. Well, if you do the calculation, if you take 4 minutes, multiply it by 365, divide it by 2, because 
because we're looking at half of the year, divide again by 60 to convert to hours, we actually get 12.16 hours. That makes complete sense. Now it's not exactly 12 hours because the sidereal day is not exactly 4 minutes behind the solar day, we rounded that, but this is accurate enough to prove my point. Now Eric has some counterpoints, so let's see what they are. Globe apologist naysayers make either one of two ridiculous claims in an attempt to excuse away this clear problem in their model. Their first defense is to claim that days are not actually 24 hours long, but instead only 23 hours and 56 minutes long, and this 4 minute difference per day fixes the math, allowing day and night to flip. Now it is true that there are two kinds of days, known as solar days and sidereal days, and sidereal days are in fact 23 hours 56 minutes long, but solar days, which everyone on Earth sets their clocks by, are exactly 24 hours in duration. Sidereal days, which nobody sets their clocks by, are actually how long the fixed stars take to make one revolution over and around our Earth plane. Okay, so you seem to have completely misunderstood the argument. While looking from above, the Earth rotates and orbits in a counterclockwise direction, and because they are the same direction, the days have to be extended in order to make up for the Earth's rotation, not shortened. So the sidereal day is actually 360 degrees, while the solar day adds 4 minutes to make up for it. We do indeed set our clocks to the solar day, because that's the actual time for the sun to reach the same position in the sky again. You seem to have mistaken that in order to make up for the Earth's orbit, that 4 minutes have to be taken out. But that's not actually the case, it has to be added on. And it's the solar day that just for the orbit, not the sidereal day. So you basically just got it mixed up. Firstly, the fact that sidereal and solar days both exist, and are not exactly the same duration, is yet another proof that the stars and sun are moving, and not the Earth. No, stars are used as a more objective reference because it's pretty much the most objective reference we have. Everything in the universe is relative to each other, so the safest way is to pick things that are far away, because any movement relative between the Earth and those far things are less noticeable. Stars fit this pretty well, and in our perspective, they pretty much don't move, especially considering we only use fixed stars, not just any stars, which stay in the same position in our perspective. The fact that we have a difference between a sidereal and a solar day is not because the fixed stars are moving, they're not because we chose them for the exact reason they don't move, it's because the Earth and the Sun are moving. If the apparent movement of the stars and sun was actually the result of us living on a spinning globe, as we're told, then there would and could only be one duration of day, namely, the amount of time it takes to complete one full rotation. The fact that there are two different durations of rotation time for the sun and stars just further proves that they are moving at their own unique speeds over and around a motionless, fixed Earth. Yeah, but the stars we use to calculate the sidereal day is based on fixed stars. Stars do move in the night sky all the time, but if you choose only the fixed stars, you're going to get a more objective measurement. So no, your theory proves nothing. Secondly, if globe apologists want to claim solar days are now suddenly only 23 hours and 56 minutes, then why hasn't anyone in history ever noticed that our 24-hour clocks, which billions of people have used for thousands of years, actually fall behind reality four minutes every single day. Okay, well you're just misunderstanding the science, so we're going to skip this part. Their next defense, even more ridiculous than the first, is to claim that the Earth actually must complete 361 degrees of rotation per day, and that that somehow makes up for it. They completely redefine what a day means, and claim, instead of a day being one full 24-hour rotation of the globe, as we have always been taught, a day now suddenly means the amount of rotation until the sun reaches the same point in the sky, which they say is approximately 361 degrees. That's exactly the point you misunderstood to begin with. The Earth has to rotate an extra approximately 1 degree in order to make up for its orbit around the sun. All our clocks are adjusted to that, which is the solar day. I don't understand, this is basically the same as the first point you made, but this time you understood the concept, I guess. With this excuse, however, new problems arise because the globe's supposed orbit around the sun is actually elliptical. So depending where and when during its revolution around the sun, the Earth's rotation on its axis would have to be both speeding up and slowing down at different times of the year just to maintain their new definition of what a day means. But of course, in their own model, the Earth's alleged rotation never speeds up or slows down and remains constant always. They cannot have it both ways. 
Okay, but that's just an overestimation of how much the elliptical orbit means. To understand this, we need to understand the solar day a bit more detail. This measures the time it takes for the sun to reach the same position in the sky each day. In other words, reach the same meridian in the sky. Now, although we set our clocks to 24 hours, the solar day actually varies throughout the year. According to Wikipedia, the difference between the longest and shortest solar days is about 51 seconds. That is hardly anything, so the length of solar days can differ, but not by much, and as long as the average is 24 hours, then our clocks are adjusted correctly. 51 seconds is not enough to make a noticeable difference in our everyday lives, which is really only about 1.4% of the day. But like the kid who wants to have his cake and eat it too, these leaps of logic pose no problem for the willfully ignorant. <laughs> I mean, we'll have all the cake we want since this is the correct model. I've made plenty of videos explaining the flaws of the Flat Earth model, so Eric, if you ever have time, I invite you to watch some of them. That'll do it for today, guys. Huge shout out to Fireshard, Alan Morton, and Misfixit for their generous support on Patreon. Any support is appreciated. I'll see you all later.